All right, guys, we're gonna get started. Um, I'm Swapno, first of all. Sorry, guys, I, it's just too difficult for me to keep up with all the chat and it's kind of distracting for me. I know Professor Wagner has no problem with it, but I get a little bit flustered when I see like so much of this stuff going on. So I'm just gonna restrict chat directly to host. Um, and that would just be easier for me to keep track of what questions are being asked. And then I can also just answer the questions um, more effectively. So we'll see. Maybe if I get better at this in the later in the semester, I'll, I'll open it back up again. Um, but it seems like there's other avenues for you guys to chat with each other if you want to. Um, so let you guys figure that out. Um, cool. All right. So let's get started. Um, so for this week, kind of continuing on what Professor Wagner started in terms of um, just covering kind of intro to Python, we'll be going into different types of data that can be represented in Python. Um, there's, a, there's a variety of data types and you don't need to know all of them. You don't need to memorize all of them, but we'll just kind of cover them for just kind of your knowledge. And then we'll also go into arrays, hopefully, if we have some time. And then on Friday, we'll continue with um, creating new tables from scratch. So on Monday, we had um, Professor Wagner kind of take in pre-built tables from like a CSV file or something like that. So we'll talk about how can you actually just make a brand new table from scratch. Um, and then also just go into how do you um, manipulate columns and tables. All right, so, so a few announcements for today. Um, firstly, uh, please remember to have the discussion worksheet open or printed out before you join discussion. Um, tutoring section signups are also gonna be released today on Piazza. Uh, it's around 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, vitamin four is out now, so please complete that before Friday's lecture. And the first homework is due tomorrow night. Make sure you're in tonight for extra credit. Um, so yeah, those are the main announcements. And yeah, we'll review some Python basics. First, I wanted to show you this graph, <laughs> this, uh, this comic about Stack Overflow. Um, so Stack Overflow is a really incredible resource when you're trying to do things in Python. Um, and programming in general. And um, the secret to being a good like programmer in industry in the real world is to just like know how to use Stack Overflow. It's like basically most of your job, like 90% of your job. So I'll just show you guys how to use this. Um, so if you just wanna like search for something, let's say, you know, Python, how do I round to two decimal places? So I can search for this. And then typically the first result is gonna be from Stack Overflow, so you see Stack Overflow here. So you can click on this. And so someone's asked this question and then you can like find the answer here. Um, in this particular case, they were trying to round a number and then also convert it into text, which we'll talk about today what that means. But people answered here, 474 people thought this is the best answer. So great resource and you'll definitely be using it um, in your future career. So I just wanted to share that. Um, and then in terms of actually reviewing what we covered last lecture, so Professor Wagner introduced a bunch of different ways to manipulate tables. Um, so we'll just kind of review them here with another example as well. So um, first one over is select. So what that does is if you have your table, let's say it has a name T, so T.select, some label, then it's gonna return a new table um, with just the columns that you specify. Uh, and then if you want to create the table, but with some of the columns, not in there, you can use drop. So drop allows you to drop certain columns. Um, you can also sort. So if you have a table, let's say you want to sort by a specific column, you can do that using the sort uh, function. And um, where is what you can use to filter your table based on specific conditions. Um, so that's that. Um, and so we'll just kind of review these. So it's okay if you don't like completely remember um, all these are know exactly how they work. We're gonna just go through that right now. So for today's example, um, we're gonna work with a new table actually. So this table contains, um, contains some data about players in the NBA. So we have a column for the name of the player. We have a column for the position. Um, so these are kind of abbreviated, but if you're familiar with basketball, you'll know what these mean. Um, and then we have the team name as a text, and then we also have their salary in the 2015 to 2016 season. And so, um, in case it's not clear, the salary is in millions of dollars. Um, so that's that. Uh, can you make the screen a bit larger? Sure. 
a little bit better. Cool. So um, let's say if we wanted, so we had this table and let's say we wanted to view all of the point guards as a point guard is a position in basketball. And so let's say you wanted to view everybody who has a position of point guard. So how would we do that? We can use the where function to do that. Um, so let's make a new name called point guards. And then we're gonna say this equals nba.where. And then we're gonna specify position as the column that we care about. And then PG is the abbreviation for point guard. So that's gonna take our table NBA. It's gonna filter it down to just the rows where position is point guard, and then assign that to the name point guards. So we can run this. And again, this doesn't show anything because we just assigned it to the name, but if you actually wanna see what the result of this is, we can just print this out. And so now we have a table and so it's just point guard. So notice in this first one, it said there's like 407 rows emitted. Now it's 75 rows emitted. So now we have this table of just point guards. And then what's also kind of interesting, I guess, or maybe it's not that interesting, but this table, everybody's a point guard in this, in this table now, this point guards uh, table. So this column position isn't that useful. Like it's, it's just gonna be PG all the way down. So it's just kind of like a waste of space. Um, and so what we can do is we can drop that column. So we could do point guards dot drop, and then we can just drop the position column. And so now we have the same table, but with position removed. And so that's a useful way to use that method. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that just because we dropped it, that doesn't mean that um, it actually gets removed from the name. So if I go back and try to look at point guards again, I still have the column in there. So it's really important that when you write something like this, all this is doing is it's saying, let's take the table point guards and then let's return a copy of that table without the position column in it. So we're not actually modifying point guards itself. So that's really important. Um, so there's a few questions coming in. So let me just answer some of these. So is Python case sensitive um, to things like position? It is actually. So I can actually just show you an example. So if you go here, let's say we do position. It didn't do anything here because there is no column with lowercase position. So it just returned the same table as original. So it, the, uh, it is case sensitive. So it's important to do that. Um, what exactly is a CSV file? How do we make one of our own? Um, I'll try to cover that maybe in the next lecture when we're talking about building tables. So I'll get back to that one. Um, why are point guards alphabetized by name instead of, or by team instead of name? Um, that's a good question, actually. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's just the way Python chose to, to order it, or maybe that's actually the way the CSV. Um, the CSV is like the original file that contains all this data. So the CSV file was probably already ordered by the team. And so Python just took that and showed us what it was like. Now we can reorder that if we want to. And I'll, we'll go over how to do that in a sec. Um, let's see. So when assigning the table to point guards, can you simultaneously use drop and where? Ooh, yes, you can. So let's do that. So let's do this all in one operation. So I think the suggestion was, we're gonna take NBA, we're gonna use where to get everybody who is a point guard, and then we're gonna drop position. So we can do this all in one line actually. And then take a look at what point guard looks like. And so now we can see that this has just the point guards and the position has been dropped. So you can do this all in one line and you can do like a lot more. You can keep adding where and drop to this and kind of go as long as you want. Um, Uh, okay, what if you want to re-edit the original table instead of the most modified table? Yeah, so that's kind of what we just did here essentially. So we had point guards and we just kind of changed it. So um, you could also do something like this. So you could say point guards equals just the point guards and then you can edit it and say point guards actually, and now I want it to be point guards um, without that column. So then I can do dot drop position. And so now I've like modified an existing table. And so you can do that as well. So you just, if you want to modify an existing table, you just have to assign it back to the same name essentially. Um, so that's how we do that. Um, okay, there's like a lot of questions now. So it's a little hard for me to answer all of them. Uh, let me try to just make Yanai the host again so that he can help answer some of these questions. 
Okay, cool. And now you should be co-host now. So you should be able to answer some more of the questions. Um, all right, so let's continue. Um, so someone mentioned like, why was it sorted in the order of uh, the teams? So we can do that. Uh, we can sort by something else if you want to. So let's say we can take point guards, we could sort by salary if you want instead. So we specify the salary column and then what order do we want to sort it in? We'll do descending equals true. Um, and then we'll just do that show. Ooh. Okay, so I, this is actually a good example. So I tried to do dot sort salary and I got the name of the column wrong actually. So if you look up at this table, the name of the column is actually um, apostrophe 15 through apostrophe 16 salary. So we should do that. Um, just put this in double quotes. There we go. So now this is sorted by salary. And so descending means that we're going to have the largest salary at the top and then the smallest salary at the bottom. So Chris Paul is the, was the highest earning um, point guard in this particular season. So you can see that here. Um, and then if you wanted to have it in the reverse order, you could just do like descending equals false, um, which I believe is actually the default. And then uh, this dot show, what that does is it shows the entire table. So I'm able to kind of scroll through this entire table. If I want to just see a certain number of rows, you could just pass in a number into this function. So you could do dot show 15. And then now this is just gonna show the first 15 rows. So you can do that as well. Um, salary is in millions, correct, yes. And can you do ascending equals true? I'm not sure about that one actually. I think it's just descending. So it's either like descending equals true or false, which is basically the same, um, but yeah. And then difference between two, co two quotations and single quotes, I will um, go over that actually towards the end of the lecture. Cool. Um, any other questions about what we've done so far? So we've seen where, we've seen sort, why do the other tables not need show? Ah, okay, good question. So if you just do the table name without show, it just kind of, Python does its own thing and it's gonna cut off at some, some number here and it's gonna say everything is omitted. And so show forces it to show everything. So if I do show on this one, now it shows the entire table. So that's essentially what it does there. Um, whereas by default, Python wants to be a little bit smart. It wants to make, make it a little bit easy to read. So it's just gonna cut off most of the table and just show you a few of them. So show is really kind of forcing it. What does the 15 mean in dot show dot 15? Um, this means show the first 15 rows. So that's what's been done here. So show the first 15 rows, omit the rest of them. And then, yeah, that's a really good question. So one question was, when we, when we write something like this, is it actually modifying point guards? It's not modifying point guards. Um, so any statement like this is basically just creating a brand new table. It's like a copy of the existing table, but then making some modifications to the copy. But the original point guard stays the same. If you want to actually modify point guards, you have to assign this back into point guards. So you'd have to do something like this. This, is, this now is going to actually modify point guards. So it's quite um, important there. Um, does the true have to be capitalized? Yes, it does. Um, what does descending true mean? So descending true means um, that the largest value is at the, at the top and then the smallest value is at the bottom. And if you did descending equals false, then it'd be the opposite. So the values would be like, like increasing as you go down. Um, and then to clarify again, show 15 means show the first 15 rows. So it's not like taking a random number of rows or anything. So we specifically sorted this by the salary in like kind of decreasing order. And then we said, let's show the first 15. So essentially this is saying, let's show the top 15 most earning point guards. Um, oh, is there a code that resets the table back to the original? Um, unfortunately there isn't. So if you do like modify your table, you kind of have to go back and go back to the top and look at how you created it from the beginning. So there isn't a simple way to just reset it back to like the value it used to be. Um, a common way to do this is that you'll typically come up with new names as you're constructing like modifications to the table. So for example, you know, we have the NBA table, which has everybody. And then we created the point guards table to just look at point guards. 
And so now if I go back and try to look at NBA, that's actually been unmodified because we use a different name to kind of store all the different things we're doing with point guards. So this is generally a good practice to do. Um, as, you, as you're kind of like filtering the table down or removing columns, it typically can be a good idea to just kind of assign it to a new name that hasn't been used yet. So that way you kind of have those original copies if that's important to you. There's some context where like it doesn't really matter um, and it's okay to just kind of keep modifying the existing table. Um, okay, cool. So I believe that's it for the table review. Um, so hopefully these are a little bit more familiar now and um, you know, you'll be, you'll be using these like homework and stuff like that too. So, you know, just best way to kind of understand how to use this is just try it out, you know, with the table. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll provide many opportunities for you to do that. Um, all right, so next is numbers. So we've been working with tables. Now we're gonna like zoom in a little bit and look at really kind of simple data types, um, numbers. And so Professor Wagner did a lot of examples of this in the first lecture, so you've already seen numbers, but we're just gonna kind of peek a little bit deeper into this and what, what this actually means. Um, and so there's kind of two main kind of numbers that we're gonna be using in Python. So one is called integer, um, or commonly just called int as an abbreviation. So if I do like 10 times three, um, so this is an integer because it doesn't have a, a fractional component. So it doesn't have a decimal place. Um, whereas if you had something that actually has a decimal place, like 30.0, this is called a float. So that's the main difference here. So integers always, like, or I guess integers never have decimal places, floats always have decimal places. Um, and so there's certain reasons to use one or the other. I mean, you might be thinking, well, why don't I just always use floats? Because floats can represent whole numbers and fractions, right? So it seems like, why don't you just always use floats? But there are some advantages to using integers, which we'll go into in, in a second. Um, and the other interesting thing about Python is that if you try to divide two integers, you actually get a float back. So if I take 10 divided by two, each of these individually, I didn't put any decimal place on them. But now when I run this, I get 5.0. And so now we have um, that this has been converted into a float. So division operations tend to convert things uh, into floats. Um, exponentiation does not. So let's say if we had 10 and we wanna raise it to third power, we can do this by typing two asterisks and then three. So now 10 has been raised to the third power. This is also still an integer. Um, there's no decimal place on this. But if we did the square root of 10, so square root is the same as raising a number to 0.5, um, to the 0.5th power, you could say. Um, now we get a float. And so, um, you know, operations like this can result in float, uh, even though it's exponentiation, because we did exponentiation, exponentiation to a um, float value here. Um, a lot of questions about doubles. Um, I will get to that, actually. Those are good questions. Um, but don't worry about that right now. Um, so one of the advantages of integers, why would you use integers? Is that because you can represent really, really large numbers um, without limits. So floats do have limits, um, but um, ints, you can go like really, really large. So let's go, let's do a really large number. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna raise this to the 890th power. So this is gonna be like gigantic, okay? So let's run this. Okay, so this is the result. And so, Python does a great job of calculating that number uh, exactly. And um, that's like no problem for it. So to be able to generate this gigantic number and that's kind of the nice thing about ints. Um, with doubles, they have limits. So let's do 10 divided by three. This is three, this, is gonna, this should be three and a third. But if we actually look at this in decimal place, right? It is 3.33333 forever, but it's actually not forever. It ends up cutting off um, some of the digits that are there. I mean, most of the digits because it's infinite. So, you know, I, I know floats can't be represented to like infinite digits. So there's a certain limit there. Your computer only has like so much space in it to like represent that. Um, so that's kind of one of the disadvantages of floats. Um, do pi. <laughs> um, I think I need to import something to do pi. So we'll, we'll try that another time, but I encourage you to try out pi. Pi will also be unfortunately trimmed off. Um, and so this is really important to keep in mind um, because what this means is that you lose some precision in, or, you know, in terms of what you're actually able to represent. So let's say we had a really long number. I'm just gonna write some gibberish here. 
Um, and then let's, so it's like some gigantic number and then point some other really, really long set of things, okay? So let's write that out. And then let's just see what Python thinks this number actually is. So if you notice here, right, it was able to get up to like just this many digits. And then after that, it just cut it off. It couldn't actually represent it. So this is kind of one of the things to keep in mind is that you can have rounding errors um, in Python. And so you might expect that, you know, you're, you have some number that you're representing, but then actually Python cuts off some of it. And so you lose some, you lose a little bit of information. Um, to be fair, like for most situations, if you have a large number like this, it probably doesn't matter that you lost that information here, but it's still kind of helpful to, to just kind of keep that in mind because you could have things that, that are a little bit weird. So actually a good example of this is, um, let's say we take this number and then we subtract the same number, but up to like this decimal place, right? So what do you think is gonna happen here if we do this? So I'm taking this number with like, I don't know what this is, let's say it's like 40 decimal places and then we're gonna subtract the same number, but just up to 20 decimal places. So what, what do you guys think might happen if we do this? Okay, a lot of people saying zero. Someone said 0, 0.0. <laughs> Someone said 20. Um, might get negative. Okay, let's see what happens. So it actually is 0, 0.0. And again, why does this happen? It's because of um, there's a limit to what flow can represent. So this is a really good example of where, in actuality, if you did the math like by hand, this is, shouldn't be zero. These numbers are different. Um, but you know, Python is just only able to represent so much precision. Um, and so that's why it's, uh, it, gets, it gets a little bit wrong here, I guess. Um, and so you can consider this like a rounding error because this number is basically zero, it's super close, but it's not actually zero. But um, there's only so much that Python can do there. So there's some limits there. Um, another interesting result is, let's say we take 13 and we take the square root of it, which is this number, right? And then what if we now square this number? So can we get 13 back? Um, and so it turns out we can't get exactly 13 back, again, for the same reason. So when you take the square root of 13, it's some number with a bunch of decimal places. Um, Python has to cut off some digits. So now you get a slightly different number. And then if you square that number, you don't quite get 13. You get really close. I mean, this is basically 13, but it's not um, exactly 13. Uh, so why does Python have this limitation? It's just because, you know, there's only so much um, kind of like storage you can have in, in your computer. And at a certain point, you kind of have to make, make a cutoff. And so the cutoff for floats tends to be about 15 to 16 digits or like significant figures, you could say. Um, so that's just kind of what a decision was made. Um, someone mentioned earlier, there's another type called double. So double has like double the precision. Um, so if you're really working in situations where you care a lot about um, you know, looking at really small numbers or just looking at like things to like a very high number of significant digits, then you might want to use that. Um, and for this course, at least, we'll mainly just be using ints and floats. Um, but in, this, in your future careers, if you do go more into computer science, you'll definitely be using other types of, of numbers. And there's other types of like integers as well that you can use. So this is all kinds of, of stuff, but um, this is kind of the, the basics, I would say. Um, how does Python compute big numbers so fast? The one raised to the 890th power was like basically instantaneous. Yeah, I mean, these computers are just crazy. So um, very, very efficient. And there's there's some tricks that they do to, to do this faster. Um, like the way you would do it by hand is not exactly how a computer does it. So I won't get too much into the details, but it's pretty clever. And there's, there's ways to kind of be efficient about that computation. Um, is this the way calculator works? Uh, typically, it should be similar. Yeah, I mean that's kind of why calculators can go fast. But if you had to, that's one disadvantage of a calculator is you're not even you don't even have enough space to show this on the screen. <laughs> Whereas with a computer, you can do things like scroll and like just see all the digits. So this is a much better calculator in some ways. Um, ooh, scientific notation. Someone already guessed the next thing that we're going to talk about. Um, all right. So actually, let's before we get to that. One thing I do want to point out is you can do conversions between numbers of different types. So um, if I do 10 divided by five, it's an integer divided by an integer, which gives me a float. That's just what Python does. But if I want to see that as an int, I can convert it to an integer. So you use the int function to do this. So you can do int of 10 divided by five. Now we get two without the decimal place. So you can do that conversion. 
Um, you can do conversion in the reverse direction. So you could do float of three, which gives you 3.0. So you can do that as well. Um, and so that's what's kind of nice. So you can kind of convert different things. Um, why does a division convert those numbers? Or wait, why does four division convert the number into an int? Uh, so it doesn't, this 10 divided by five converts it to a float, but then we use int to convert it back into an int. Um, yeah, and sorry, I, we might have kind of lost this, but floats are numbers with decimal places, ints are numbers without decimal places. That's what those two are. So those are just different types of numbers. Um, so yeah, and so um, because floats are kind of limited to 15 digits, it might seem like if you have really small numbers that you're working with, um, you're kind of, there's no hope. Like you're just not gonna be able to represent really small numbers. Um, you know, like let's say you have a number that's like, five times 10 to the negative 50. It's like some really, really tiny number. And maybe you care about that. There's like certain applications where you might need to work with really, really tiny numbers. Um, and so does that mean you can't use floats? Like what are you supposed to do there? The good thing is Python does have a way to represent really small numbers if there's a bunch of zeros like in front of the digits. Um, and so that's called scientific notation. So we can see an example of this. So if we do six divided by four, we get 1.5. And then if we do six divided by like 4,000, now we get 0 0.0015. And so now let's try to do like a really, really large division here. Um, just gonna do like a lot of digits. And so now Python says 1.5 e negative 49. So what this means is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 49. Um, and so Python's being smart here. Technically, this is kind of much smaller than what you should be representing with a float. But Python's smart, it realizes that, well, actually all the digits before 1.5 are just zero. So if you know that, then technically those aren't significant. Those aren't things I need to worry about. So I just need to know that it's 1.5 and it's shifted over by you know, like 49 decimal places. Um, and so that allows you to represent scientific notation. Um, and then can you also pass in scientific notation as an input? Um, you can, so you could, if you write something like this, this is valid and you can do stuff with this. Um, actually, let's try something. So what happens if I do this? Yeah, so this actually works as you kind of would expect it to. So you can just like straight up write scientific notation. Um, cool, and then a couple other things I wanted to cover really quickly. So one is um, if we have, if you assign something to a name, um, if you want to see like, let's say X equals two and you just want to see what two X is, you can't just write it like this. So this is actually gonna throw an error. So Python doesn't like this. So if you actually want to see that value, you need to do two times x, and that will give you that value. So that's just one kind of last tidbit about numbers there. Um, so yeah, just kind of quick review of the different numbers you've seen. So mainly ints and floats is what you need to worry about for this class. Um, again, integer is an integer, or int is an integer of any size, meaning has no decimal places. Float is a number which may or may not have a fractional part, but it's always going to be represented with that kind of dot something. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically the basic difference here. One always has decimal places, one never does. Um, and then there's kind of three main limitations to floats. So they have limited size. Um, the size is huge, like 15 or 16 significant digits. Like that's, that's pretty considerably large. Um, and it's probably gonna be good for most, most of your kind of needs. Um, and then the big caveat with floats is just after you do your arithmetic, there might be like some decimal places that are wrong. Again, this is like that rounding here. Um, and so that's like an example we saw where we had that large number with like a bunch of um, decimal places and we sub subtracted the same number, but with fewer decimal places and it shouldn't have been zero, but it was because it uh, just wasn't able to represent that. Um, okay, so a couple questions here. Would you be able to represent a number with repeating pattern after decimal, such as 0.123123123123? So yeah, you can try to do that, but again, it's it's gonna um, it's gonna cut it off. Like we saw with that example when we did 10 divided by three, right? So if we go back here, um, 10 divided by three, right? This is technically just 3.3, .3 and then that three is just forever. But Python wasn't able to represent that exactly perfectly. So that that unfortunately you won't be able to actually really get it up there um, to that level that you want. Um, are line 40 and 41 valid statements? So line 40 is a valid, valid statement. You can definitely do x equals two. You can assign the value of two to the name x. That's 
completely fine. And it's very common, we'll do that. And this name could be anything. Like I can just really call this anything if I want. Um, I can say like anything equals two, and that's fine. And we can actually look at what the value of anything is. So anything is two here. So this is perfectly fine. You can assign um, things to names. That's totally fine. The main thing I was just trying to show here is if you want to see two times this value, you have to make sure you use the asterisk. You can't just do like two x. Like in typical math notation, you'd be able to just write like two x, but you can't do that in Python. There's certain rules around how you write this in Python, and so it's not going to be able to understand what you mean when you just write two x. Um, so that's the main distinction there. Um, yeah, why does Python choose to use scientific notation in some cases, in other cases it doesn't? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's like certain mechanics to how Python works. Um, like in this case, it did, it did use it. In the other case, when we were doing the subtraction, it wasn't clever enough to use it. Part of the reason it didn't use it here is because these numbers were really large to begin with. So we tried to maybe do the scientific notation after like taking the subtraction, which causes issues. So. There's some limitations there and it's not going to be like totally perfect but yeah is there a way to guarantee scientific notation probably not exactly but if you know you're already working with small numbers to begin with you could start just representing representing them in scientific notation like we did here so if you know they're going to be small from the get-go you could just start representing them as such and then you'll be fine um so there are some ways cool any questions about this slide Okay, cool. One last question I do want to answer. Do you have to define X before you do two times X? For sure you do. Um, very good question. So let's say I do two times Y here. This isn't gonna work because it says name Y is not defined. So you definitely have to assign that name before you do it. Now, if I do Y equals two and then do two times Y, that's all good. So very, very important, yes. So you need to always assign the name before you try to use it. Um, very good question. All right, so now let's do strings. So strings are essentially just how Python represents text. That's all that means. So strings equals text. That's all I need to remember, really. Um, so for example, uh, let's, I'm just gonna use something here, flavor. So if I put this in single quotes, this is, this is a string. So if I just run this line, um, it just returns flavor, but with the quotes around it. So this is called a string. Um, now, if I just write flavor on its own, that doesn't work because flavor on its own means you're trying to use like a variable or a name. Um, and in this case, we never define the name flavor. Um, so you have to make sure that if you're trying to use strings, you have to have it in quotes. Um, this, this doesn't really mean anything to Python. Um, but if you did like flavor equals two and then did flavor again, that's fine um, because that's a name. And so that's, that's valid. Um, and there's some situations where you might want to use double quotes. So you can actually represent strings with double quotes and single quotes. Um, so here's an example. So let's say I wanted my string to be, uh, don't always use single quotes. And so if I try to put this in single quotes, what happens is that this single quote here, or this apostrophe, Python thinks, oh, that's the end of your string. And then now you're just typing like some gibberish here, which Python doesn't accept. And so if we run this, this is invalid syntax. You're not allowed to do this. Um, and so it's just kind of tricky for Python because Python says, okay, I see a single quote. That means you're starting a, a string. Okay, I see another single quote. That means you've ended that string. Now after this, you should be doing something else that's valid in Python, but you can't just type T. It doesn't mean anything to Python. So that's not allowed. Um, and so if you actually wanted to represent this properly, you can use double quotes at the beginning and the end. So now if you do this, now this is fine. Python knows what this is. Um, so that's totally fine. Um, can you, you also use triple quotes? <laughs> um, I actually think you can in Python, you can use triple quotes and that's really common, you commonly used to represent really long strings. It's kind of slightly different use case, but you can do that. Um, why did I need to write flavor again here? Uh, I just wrote flavor again here because I wanted to show you what the value was. If you just write a line like this, it doesn't actually um, return anything. It doesn't, it doesn't print out anything because this is an assignment operation. So that's why it's really common in Python. You'll see we'll just like write the name again, just so if you put the name, that means it's, it's asking Python, show me what the name is. Um, 
So yeah. How do you put double quotes in strings? Very good question. Um, so let's say, let's do this one. Let's say, um, and then he said something and that's the other thing. So if you, again, if I just try to do it like this, Python's gonna mess up, but if you do backslash and then double quotes, it knows that, okay, that's not the end of a string. That's actually a quotation that you wanna include in the string itself. So just make sure you do that on all the double quotes that you actually wanna include. And so now if you try to show this, now it shows, you know, something like this. Uh, it's like kind of doing something a little bit funny here. But in any case, um, yeah, so there's, there's a way to kind of do it. Um, can you convert a string to an integer? Oh yeah, very good question. We actually can do that uh, a little bit later. Um, so let's just do a few more things with strings really quickly. So one thing to keep in mind is you can, you can add strings together. So you could do straw plus berry. And so this gives you strawberry. So you can add two strings together like this. Um, that's totally fine. But you have to keep in mind that spaces are not added for you. So if we do something like this, this doesn't add the space for me. So one way to get around that is you can add the space in one of the two strings. So this will give you what you want. Um, another common way to do this is you can add a string that is just a space like this. Let's notice here how there's a space here. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, and so then you get Chris space Paul. So that's fine too. Um, you can also multiply strings. So if you have ha as a string and you do like times a hundred, um, it just returns it again and again and again. So it's kind of a fun one. Um, so you can do that, so that's totally fine. However, you unfortunately cannot do ha times 5.5, .5. like that doesn't work. <laughs> so it doesn't just do like ha five times and a half, uh, sadly. So it's not quite smart enough to pick that up. Um, and you also, let's say I wanted to do like, I wanted strings in my, in my or I wanted numbers in my strings for some reason. Um, and so maybe like I'm creating a username or something for like some website. So if I want to do like ha plus 10, that's also going to throw an error. However, if you want to do, if you actually want to include it, that number in your string, you can put the 10 in quotes and now you'll get ha and 10 together. Now this is all like one string. So you can do that. Um, you can also do a conversion. So you can take 10 and convert it into a string using str and do that too. So this gives you the same result. So there's a couple of ways to kind of get numbers into strings. And there will be situations where you want to do that. So it's helpful to know this. Um, and then alternatively, you can go the reverse direction. So let's say you have three in quotes. So this is a string, but then if I do int on this value, now I get back three as an actual number. Um, and so this is one way to go with the reverse direction. Um, one thing, and then you can do the same thing with float. So you could do like float 3.0, and then this is gonna now return a float. But one thing you cannot do, sadly, is you can't do int of 3.0 as a string. Um, if you do this, you're actually gonna get um, an error here. And so the reason for this is because Python isn't able to kind of do all the steps for you. It, it, the int function here is expecting to see a string without any decimal places. And so because you have decimal places, um, it just kind of messes up. So ideally what you'd want to do is you'd want to first take float of 3.0, which gives you the 3.0, and then you'd have to afterwards put that into int, and then you get three. So you kind of have to do it in like two steps there. Um, why would you put a string inside the int function? Um, I mean, there's, there's certain situations where you're working with data where um, for some reason the, the numbers were um, coded up as like, text and so you're trying to do some math with the numbers but you know the person who, who made the data set it's in text you need to convert it into numbers in order to do any type of operations with it there's other situations where you might have something like this where you have like ha and 10 like maybe you have a bunch of users and for some reason like the person who made that data set they had like the name of the person and like some number after it and you want to split those up and then do some math with the number so that's kind of some reasons where you might want to do things like that so um, it's actually very common that numbers come up as strings for some reason, and you have to kind of convert them into ints or floats. It's very common. Um, okay, why does this line work? Um, the reason for that is because, first of all, float of 
Um, this works because float is expecting to see a string with a decimal place in it. So this is a string with a decimal place. So it, it's able to kind of run that properly to get 3.0. And then we know that we can do int of 3.0. We kind of did this up, up above in the earlier cells. Um, that's just three. And so basically that's, it's totally fine to just pass this in as well instead of just the number 3.0. So you're just kind of doing two operations at once, but that's actually okay. So you can definitely kind of chain functions together. That's totally fine. Um, cool. So uh, just kind of recapping text and strings. So string value is a snippet of text. It can be any length. It could just be one character, or just A if you want. Um, it can be an entire word. You can have sentences. You can use um, apostrophes. If you're going to do that, make sure you use double quotes. And um, you can also do some conversions. There's some limitations around it, but you can do conversions. So you could do like int of 12, you could do float of 1.2. Um, and then you can also convert any value into a string. So if you have five, you can convert into a string by doing str5. So that's also fun. Um, cool, so now let's, let's try to do a discussion question. Um, so assume you have the following statements. So you, you run the following statements already. So you run x equals three, y equals four in single quotes, and z equals 5.6 in single quotes. So what would be the source of error in each example below here? So just take a couple of minutes to like think about it. Maybe you can, you can write it down if you want, if that's helpful. Um, and all these are gonna give errors. So the key here is just to figure out, okay, why is it, why is it causing an error based on what we've talked about so far? Um, so I'll just give a couple of minutes and then we can just kind of go over it. Okay, cool. So let's try to go over these. I'm already seeing a few answers coming in. So for A, um, any thoughts on? Yeah, so for A, it's, um, you know, you can't add an int and a string together. So X is an int because it's just three. Y is a string, so you can't add an int and a string together. Um, how about B? So Z is a float. So Z isn't quite a float. Z is actually a string. It's a float contained in a string, but it is a string at the end of the day. Um, so the, the problem with this one is, so Y plus Z, that's actually fine. You can do this. You can do four in quotes plus 5.6 in quotes. What that's actually gonna give you is it's gonna concatenate the string. That's called concatenation. So Y plus Z is actually gonna return 45.6 in quotes. So that's what you're gonna get there, but then, that's 45.6 in quotes. So you can't convert that into an integer directly. That's what we saw. So the error actually happens when you try to run int of that. Y plus Z is actually totally fine on its own. Um, the integer of that is what causes the problem. Um, and then how about C? Int Y doesn't work. No, int Y actually works. Because y is four in single quotes. So int of that is actually just gonna give you four as a number. So that's actually that's actually fine. So the individual components of this are actually totally fine. So um, string of x turns three into three in single quotes, int of y turns that into just four without the quotes. But then now what you have now what's happened is now you're trying to add a string plus an int. And so when you try to do this plus operation, that's when it fails. Um, so that's really important here. So the int of y, that's actually totally fine. String of x, totally fine. But adding them together, that's where the problem comes. Um, and then lastly, how about d? d can't add a string and a float. Yep, so that one's totally correct. Everyone's getting that one. Yep, so float of z, um, this is totally fine. You're gonna get 5.6 as a float. 
but then y is still a string here, so can't do that. Cool, nice, good job. Um, all right, let's lastly go over types. Um, so we've seen all kinds of types so far, and this is sometimes going to be helpful. It's, it's more going to be useful, I guess, when you have like errors than anything, um, but you can actually assess what the type of any particular value is. So for example, if I have 10, I can figure out what's the type of 10. So I just do type and then put in 10 and it says int. So this tells me what the type is. Um, again, if I, if I assign 10 to the value or assign the value of 10 to the name A, uh, I can look at what the type of A is. The type of A is also int. So you can assess the type of a name. That's totally fine as well. Um, you could also do type of 4.5. That's a float. You could do type of ABC in single quotes. That's going to give you a string. Um, and then you could also even do type of NBA. So if you recall, NBA was, some, was a name that we used earlier above. Any thoughts on what this is going to do? Yeah, table. So NBA is a table that we kind of read in from a CSV file. And so in this particular case, it says data science.tables.table. So this is a particular kind of table um, that's available in what's called a module, the data science module. So um, we'll kind of go over that probably in the next lecture, what that actually means. But there's different kinds of tables that you could have. Um, whereas these are just kind of standard, like Python integer, Python float, Python string. But this is a specific to like the data science module. So this is actually a table type that um, the, the people who made this course actually created for this class. Um, it's a kind of like a special type. Um, so you can actually make your own types, which is kind of interesting about Python. Um, so we have type of that. Um, we used true earlier. We used descending equals true in a in a sort function call earlier above. So we actually see what's the type of that true that we passed in. Um, so it's called bool or boolean. Someone already knew that. Nice. Um, so we will be using booleans in this class as well, a little bit, quite a bit actually. Um, and booleans are always just true or false. So that's that's kind of what they're that's the purpose of that type. So it's always true or false. That's all it is. Um, whereas like you know an int could be like literally any number that doesn't have a decimal place. Boolean is just true or false. Um, and then I think we might have gone over this in the last lecture, but there's a function called add. So you can do adds of negative five, and it just takes the absolute value. So adds of negative five returns five. So this is a function, and so we can look at what's the type of adds. You can actually do that too. Seems kind of funny, but you can do that too. Um, and so you get built-in function or method. So that just basically means abs is a function. Um, so you can do that as well. Um, you could probably even do type of type. I've never tried this. Let me see. It should work here. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. I didn't actually expect that to happen. I'm going to look into why that happened. That's actually pretty cool. Um, okay. But anyways, in general, it should work. So you could do like type of sum. Sum is another function we're going to talk about in the next lecture. Um, that's also like a built-in function. Um, cool. What does bool mean? So <laughs> bool is just like a word. Uh, you don't need to really worry about the meaning, but basically it's just that bool represents true or false. So when you write like true or false, that's that's a boolean. When you write four, that's a integer. When you write 4.5, that's a float. Um, so this is a different type that is used in Python. Um, so we can just kind of go over all the kind of types we've seen so far. So basically we've seen five so far. Um, so you have int, again, an example of that is just the number two. Float, an example of that is the number 2.2. Um, string, example of that is redfish, bluefish in single quotes. Uh, and then you also have kind of built-in function or method, basically just a function. So add is an example of that. Uh, and then we've seen table. These are kind of the main types we've seen so far. And there'll be additional types we're gonna go into in the future, but not too many more than this. Um, but these are kind of the main ones that you need to worry about for this course. Um, and then again, the type function is helpful because it helps you tell you the type of a value. So you can pass in any value into that. So you can pass in two, you can even pass in two plus two, that's also fine. Um, and um, an expression's type is based on its value. Um, so, you know, X, X classically, you wouldn't think of that as a number, but if you assign the value of two to the name X, then X now takes on the type of integer. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, the, the types of names can basically change to like whatever you want them to be. It just depends on what value they're taking. 
Um, so what's the type of two plus two? Um, so two plus two would be four. And so the type of that is gonna be integer. And we can actually just do that here actually, so you can see it. So that's integer. Cool, so I think we're basically at the end. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll just, I'll just show you this slide too, because we did go over this too. Um, so I know we're a little bit over, but I'll just kind of continue really quickly. So again, with conversions, you can convert 12 in single quotes to integers because there's no decimal place in there. You can convert 1.2 in single quotes to float because there is a decimal place in there. Um, you definitely can't do, sadly, 1.2 in single quotes and convert that into a float. So Python's not quite smart enough yet, um, but I'm pretty sure there's some modern AI software you could use to do that. Um, there's been some really cool breakthroughs recently actually that have been able to do, do this kind of thing. That's cool. Um, and then um, any value can be converged into a string. Yes, GPT-3, nice, good call. Um, any value can be converted into a string. So if you have five, you can convert that into a string by doing str of five. That's gonna return five in single quotes. Um, and then numbers can be converted into kind of different types themselves. So you could take one, the integer, and convert that into 1.0 by calling float. And then similarly, if you had the float 1.2, you could convert that into an integer by doing int of 1.2. But you just have to keep in mind that when you convert floats to integers, pretty much you're gonna lose information every time. I mean, unless your float was like something 0.0, you're gonna lose information because it's just gonna clip off all the decimal places. Um, so int of 1.2 is just gonna convert into the number one. Now you've lost that 0.2. Um, cool. Um, yeah, so I think we'll stop there because I believe the next time is arrays. Yeah, so we'll just cover arrays in the next lecture, uh, but I'll stick around if there's any questions. So happy to kind of just review any other stuff.